Welcome to Lecture Online and our next example of how we deal with the Doppler shift is a really interesting example. Here we have a situation where I have a source which is moving to the right at some velocity putting out a wave with frequency 500 Hz. It continues on to the right until it hits a wall. Now this wall is going to be a moving wall. It's actually moving to the left and then an observer is moving towards the wall. What is the effect of this wall moving towards the observer and moving towards the source going to have on the frequency that this observer hears? Well, the way to look at it is, notice that these waves are coming from the left to the right at the velocity equal to, let's say, a velocity of sound equal to 340 meters per second. And as the waves approach the wall, they reflect off the wall, but the wall moves to the left which gives it the, the impression then that the waves will be closer together. Actually, not just the impression, they actually will become closer together as they bounce off the wall. So they'll move like this, and then the observer is moving towards those waves. Now, the effect that this wall has by moving to the left, by causing the waves to be closer together, is the same thing as if the observer is moving towards the waves, also appearing, make them appear to be closer together. So it's almost like it, it is adding velocity to the observer. So the equation that normally is like this, frequency observed is equal to frequency of the source times the equation where we have velocity of sound, velocity of sound here, plus or minus the velocity of the observer, plus or minus the velocity of the source. To that we have to have, add the velocity of the wall and it's, it's like it is as, as if there is an observer that's moving faster towards the sound, so this is going to be plus or minus the velocity of the wall. All we have to decide now if it's a plus or minus because the wall could be moving towards the observer and the wall, of course, could be moving away from the observer. All right, we have the velocities, 5 meters per second for the observer, 10 meters per second for the wall, 20 meters per second for the source. So what will this look like? Well, this is equal to 500 hertz, times the velocity of sound is given as 340 meters per second. There we go, 340. Now, the observer is moving towards the sound. Even though he's not moving towards the source, since the sound is bouncing off the wall, it is as if he's moving towards the source. And that would cause the frequency to be higher. So what do we need here? plus or minus, in order for the frequency observed to be bigger. Well, a bigger denominator will give you bigger frequency, so this will be plus the velocity of the observer, which is 5 meters per second. What about the source? Well, the source is, in essence, moving towards the observer, so that would cause you to hear higher frequency. Higher frequency, and we're in the denominator, means we need to have a smaller denominator, so we need to subtract the velocity of the source to make this fraction, overall a bigger fraction. And finally, the velocity of the wall. The velocity of the wall moving towards the observer, observer causes the frequency to go up. So I need a bigger frequency, that means I need a bigger number in the numerator, so I need to plus the velocity of the wall. And that's how we find the ultimate frequency of that the observer hears. And my calculator is hiding here. So let's see what this equal to. So I have 340 plus 15, that would be 355, divided by 340 minus 20, which is 320. And we multiply it times 500. And so finally, the frequency observed by the observer would be 555 hertz, even though the source puts it out at 500 hertz. And that's how you deal with moving walls in case you have a homework problem like that. Okay.